Hello everyone and welcome back to some Hearthstone and today we're going to be just going over uh, a deck that I've seen very often on the ladder and uh, it's been pretty prevalent since the first wing of Blackrock Mountain has come out uh, as a result of it being the very first card that you get from that expansion and so this deck has been out on the ladders for about a month now and uh, it was strong in April and now it's still strong going into May uh, being one of the most prevalent decks that's out there right now and as you can see in this intro game uh, pretty much I was just playing zoo I was just minding my own business and then this warrior came and I was like ooh control warrior until I saw all of these weird cards coming out and I was like whoa something's going on here so Pretty much, we're introducing the Grim Patron Warrior uh, here, and we're going to uh, analyze what this deck is, why it's so good, how to play it, and then, of course, how to beat it. For the most part, this deck, what it does is, at the very beginning of its uh, infancy, it, it caught a lot of people off guard because everyone expects a, a Control Warrior, and, then, and, and a lot of the early cards in this deck are very similar to Control Warrior, and then of course you get to around turn 4 and a lot of weird, deck, a lot of weird cards start popping out. And the reason for that is pretty much what this deck does is it's fast enough that it catches a lot of large majority of decks that are being played right now it catches them right before those decks start ramping up and start getting a lot of creatures on the field um, it pretty much punishes them right beforehand and kills you right before you can actually do anything with the decks that are, are most popular right now which are a lot of the mid-range decks uh, out on the ladder at the moment so as you can see, this is the combo, you get the Warsong Commander, you get the Grim Patrons out, and you just keep recharging your Grim Patrons. And because, it, the reason why it's so good against Zoo is because Zoo really doesn't have many 3 damage minions. A lot of them are 2, 1, and then you use other creatures to uh, upgrade them, right? So that's pretty much the Grim Patron. So when I first encountered this deck, uh, I was actually, I, I tried making a Grim Priest deck, which was really fun, but we're going to look at the card first, uh, and look at the Grim Patron and see what it actually does. The Grim Patron is a 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, and whenever this minion survives damage, summon another Grim Patron. So you can probably see how this deck is used from the last, um, from the last game where we were, I was playing Zoo. And he got the Warsong Commander out, which is a really great card because it allows any creature that you summon that has three damage or less, uh, it immediately becomes a charge creature. So, strangely enough, because of the wording of this card, it uses the terminology of summons, right? When it takes damage, it summons another Grim Patron. And as a result, that Grim Patron immediately gets charged because of the Warsong Commander that is out. So that is effectively the combo that you're going for. It will allow you to create... It, it just allows you to get crazy board control. It will allow you, if you're against Zoo, or if you, your opponent just has very few cards on the board that, have, that don't do three or more damage, uh, this card pretty much clears their entire board and then fills up your entire board, right? Because you can trade in and then as long as one of your Grim Patrons doesn't die, it creates another one. So the combo that we're trying to get in this deck is of course an OTK and that is, for those of you that don't know, it's a one turn kill deck. And this terminology first came up or, or became popular with the Miracle Rogue that was really popular before and then um, you know a certain nerfs happened and it didn't work out Blizzard started nerfing a bunch of stuff the gadgets and auctioneer that has become really good got nerfed a bit and Miracle Rogue has kind of slipped back into the crevices of a lot of the popular decks with Hearthstone so the crazy thing about this deck and why it's so good as, as you probably see you'll see it in the description I have it or at the very beginning of this this video I have it on the title screen the title pa plate uh, or you can go to uh, Liquid Hearth and find it on the power ranks where you'll get a bunch of different versions of this deck 
Um, some are more aggressive than others. But the reason why this deck is so good is because it doesn't really require any crazy legendaries. Dr. Boom is not necessary even though he's in it. He's more of like a finisher in the deck. You put him out there and then your opponent is like, well, I can't really deal with that and all of these Grim Patrons, so I'm just going to leave. That's pretty much what Dr. Boom is, is there to do. Um, it's also the fact that all of the Blackrock Mountain cards that you get, they're all from, that, that you need for this deck, they're all from the first wing. So Emperor Thorasan is from the, the first wing and the Grim Patrons from the first wing. So for 700 gold you'll have all of these, you'll have all of the necessary sort of important cards to this deck. So I've kind of already talked about how you use it with the Warsong Commander, the Grim Patron, and then of course with a bit of Whirlwind and the Cruel Taskmasters. You'll be using those more often than not, I think, to proc your Acolytes of Pain because those are going to be your big card draws. Um, you're going to have Battle Rage in this deck, which is a card that's not really used that often, but it's a great card when you've got a lot of damaged what creatures no. like a bunch of Grim Patrons, right? And you just use Battle Rage, you fill your hand with cards, and now you're really in control. Because for the most part, what happens is you... What the, the dream of this deck is, is you... Pretty much you clear your opponent's board, and then you use Battle Rage, and you get a ton of cards. So now you not only have board control, but you have card control as well. And for the most part, having a lot of health isn't that big of a problem for a warrior, because they have armor. So you can always use your hero power at the late stages of the game to just get that boost in health. Um, another combo that can be used in this deck, and the reason why this deck is so good, good again is because it has many different win conditions which involves the frothing berserker and you can use whirlwind and, and get a lot of damage onto that frothing berserker so it's not actually uncommon to get around 10 to 15 damage on that frothing berserker at sm sometimes you can get 20 damage on that frothing berserker guess what if you put two of those frothing berserkers on the field at a time that's 40 damage. And as a bonus, if you have the Warsong Commander out at the same time, that Frothing Berserker gets charge, right? Because you bring it onto the field, it's a 2 4, so it gets charge. Then you use Whirlwind, bring its damage up. It's still retained charge, even though its damage is higher than 3. And you've got pretty much two 10 damage charge Frothing Berserkers, which can be pretty good. Uh, and can oftentimes be an insta win, uh, which is which is exactly what you're going for, right? It's a this deck is interesting and probably more efficient than Miracle Rogue just because it has two versions of one turn kill within one deck. So as you can see in this game that was happening, I was playing a Grim Patron Priest. I was trying. It's trying some stuff out, but it doesn't work as well just because you don't have the Warsong Commander, so you don't have that immediate charge factor. It's just happening right now, right? He gets that Grim Patron, and immediately that Grim Patron gets charged. The Dread Corsairs allow you to get a very cheap version of Taunt out, which protects your Grim Patrons. Probably the biggest disadvantage in this deck is that you can only have seven Grim Patrons. Or technically, you can only have six Grim Patrons out on the field at a time, because your Warsong Commander will be out there. But, uh, and, and because the effect of the card happens before the Grim Patron that you use to attack is going to die, Usually what happens then is uh, you don't really get the free Grim Patron when one of the other ones dies. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. So understand how Whirlwind works and um, you know this deck is this deck is really powerful. As you can see even with Rag, even with all these cards, even with the fact that he has no cards, there really isn't that much that I can do. And with three damage, the fact that the Grim Patrons do three damage, which is actually a lot of damage if you think about it with the fact that you can fill the board with these guys you can get five of them out on the field pretty easily so you end up doing like 15 damage just from those grim patrons um, and because of that that's what makes them deadly it's 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 kind of like zoo in a way you you're just getting all these zoo creatures out but a lot of zoo creatures only do one to two damage 
and you have to augment them or you have to bring out like a sea giant or something like that so the grim patron becomes extremely powerful in that regard um, also there's a lot you can do in terms of the different mana curves that you have at turn two you can bring out your armor smith or your fire axe which is pretty crazy um, which is actually really good because um, fire axe will typically destroy anything that your opponent can throw out at the during that turn uh, then you bring out your acolyte of pain for turn three and start getting some cards start uh, being able to uh, artificially grab some card draw turn four you should have already used both your charges for fire axe you bring out your death's bite on turn four you take out whatever your opponent sends out there because death's bite can typically kill most things unless it's like a yeti um, or a mechanical yeti uh, then you pretty much just use it because next turn is turn five so you bring out your your grim patrons and then you use your death spite, attack again, and then the whirlwind effect off of its death rattle allows you to get another grim patron out. So you you literally get ten manas worth of value onto the board because you played your death spite in turn four. Um, turn six, of course, is the Emperor Thorasun section of your mana of your mana curve and you use that and what happens is if you weren't able to do all the stuff beforehand you were you might have only been able to do acolytes of pain and armor smiths and you were just kind of you know using your unstable ghouls to try and ward off the opponent for a while emperor thorasen comes along brings all of your cards down so you've been getting cards this whole time you put thorasen on it brings all of your cards down by one mana and most of the time if not every time Emperor Thorazen, getting your cards just down by one mana is already worth it. If you get more than that, just consider that a bonus. Because then, of course, turn 7 comes along, and your Warsong Commander is going to be 2 mana, your Grim Patron is going to be 4 mana, you're going to then have enough mana to use Cruel Taskmasters on your Patrons, you're going to have enough mana to use Whirlwinds, because Whirlwinds are now 0 mana, to just flood the entire board and pretty much clear your opponent's board and force them to have to now use up all their cards to get that board control back. Um, and yeah, all of these combos of course can be used uh, in turn 8 and turn 9 as well because it's usually around right around 7, 8, and 9 that's where this combo is at its strongest. You can do it afterwards but your opponent's probably going to have you know more taunts and more resistance in the way. It's going to make it a little harder. So turn 7, 8, and 9 are the, are the dream turns. The dream mana pools the curve where this deck shines the most. And because this deck is very gimmick heavy, right? It relies on a one turn kill. There isn't really much to talk about in terms of decision making. What I would say is that you're using your armor smith, your fire axe, and your acolyte of pain, and, and maybe one of your cool taskmasters. Task taskmasters? Oh gosh, that that speaking. You're using one of your cool taskmasters to pretty much keep the board clear until you can get your death spite, your patrons, your uh, Emperor Thorsen out, and that's gonna what that's what's gonna set you up for that turn seven play, turn eight or turn nine. So there really isn't that much to talk about in terms of the execution of this deck. Uh, play it, and you'll you'll figure it out pretty quickly uh, how it works. I do think it's a little bit more difficult to pull off than the standard Miracle Road, but um, simply because there's two methods of one turn kill that this deck possesses, right? With the Frothing Berserkers or the uh, Grim Patrons. And of course, the Grim Patrons are really the combo that you're looking for. The Frothing Berserker combo kind of just happens. You kind of, you go into this deck, you go into each game thinking, I'm going to get the Grim Patron, I'm going to get the Grim Patron combo out. And then you get a Frothing Berserker and you suddenly go, oh, well, I could do this too, right? So that's pretty much how this deck works. It, it's relatively cheap um, apart from the two shield slams that you may need because the shield shield slam is just a cheap way of getting things off of the board, right? If you look at this deck, look at each of the cards, 
you can classify each of the cards to a specific purpose, and what one those purposes are either to help the turn seven patron play, to help the uh, frothing berserker to one to one turn kill play, or it's pretty much card draw and keeping the board clear at the early stages of the game. Once you let the game drag on to 10 mana and after that, it's it's kind of difficult to snatch a win out because most opponents are going to have, you know, big creatures that are going to stop you. Uh, if you're against Zoo, then, you know, this this deck is really good against Zoo and I I think that the reason why it came out and was so powerful was because Zoo was very powerful. Um, mid-range stuff was very powerful. Uh, mech mages, mech shaman, mech anything was all the craze, right? So I think that's why this deck did so well. It doesn't do so well, uh, and we'll talk about this in a sec with how to beat it, uh, against long game decks like Ramp Druid and Handlock and Control Warrior. These, these kinds of decks that have kind of been here forever. They're just the solid decks, and I guess we can just go into that now. Um, with, you know, how to beat it. This deck wrecks Zoo, and um, it is very effective against those mid-range decks because of the fact that it hits right before those mid-range decks are able to hit for themselves, right? Those mid-range decks are meant to hit at around 9 or 10, whereas this deck hits right before that, right? 7, 8, 9. And so... Uh, late game decks work the best against it. This is how you beat it. Um, there are two options, obviously. When you see a deck like this come onto the scene and take over the metagame of the ladder, you have two options, right? You can either figure out how to use it and play it yourself, which, surprisingly enough, Grim Patron is pretty good against Grim Patron. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting to see uh, how that works out. But the other option, of course, to decide on what deck you should play is how do I beat it? What's good against it? And unfortunately, most of the decks that are really good against it have like large legendary counts. The Control Warrior has a large legendary count in its in its hand or in the deck list. The Handlock has uh, a fair good a fair number of epics that are necessary. You could also use Demon Lock. A uh, mid-range Demon Lock would work too, simply because of Hellfire. Because Hellfire is able to kill off pretty much the entire combo, uh, Hellfire becomes very powerful against, if you are able to survive against the first onslaught of the one-turn kill. So yeah, the first step, of course, is to be able to identify that it's Grim Warrior, and uh, it, it's fairly simple to figure that out because the warrior usually won't use its hero power very early on because it needs to clear the board. So put stuff on the board, see if they use their hero power or if they do everything they can to clear the board. A control warrior usually won't do that. A control warrior will just stack on armor. So that's pretty much how you can figure out. Also, the Grim Warrior has a loot hoarder in it. Some variations have a loot hoarder. If you see a warrior throw at a loot hoarder, there's a good chance that it's a Grim Warrior, and you can start tailoring your play to, uh, to uh, you know, be able to counter what's possibly coming, which is the Frothing Berserker combo or the Grim Patron combo. So in this deck, very simply, in this game specifically, we were against a mid-rangey hunter, a face hunter, you know, a zoo type of deck. And Grim Patron is good because it can typically outlast those kinds of decks because of these combos. So yeah, this deck has been very popular on the ladder for about the past two months, and it doesn't look like it's uh, going anywhere. So if you haven't tried out the Grim Patron Warrior, start now. <laughs> 